Hello folks! In today's video, we will be assembling the Soviet track KS-AAA from UM models in 172 scale. This build is a part of the group build, which called Wheel to Vehicle in Military Use. I will leave links to the author's channel in description of this video. I am starting this video with the assembly of the car model. I am detaching all the parts from the Plastix Pro and marveling at the number of pieces. There are a lot of them, and besides the plastic parts, the kit includes rubber tires, material for simulating glass, and a set of decals. The assembly of the entire model was challenging. I want to point out right away this model is not suitable for beginners, especially considering its scale. The model's parts are very small and placing them correctly will be difficult. But if you decided to get this model, I recommend being patient. As you can see on the screen, I assembled the track cabin separately to have the opportunity to paint the interior. After painting the interior, I will be able to attach the track cabin in its place. But before painting, I wanted to do some additional work on the model, adding door handles and rear view mirrors. To add handles, I had to use a hand drill. This way I could place the door handles in the right spots and give them an authentic look. I made the mirrors from the green stuff, attaching it to pieces of wire. Cool, I'm satisfied with the result. And now I can proceed to paint the model. While priming the model, I want to show off a bit. I finally got a few parts of Valia Hawk paint from the model color series. These are quite expensive paint, but in working with this model, they justified their cost 100%. For the base color, I choose the color of Soviet uniform from the World War II. This paint call it Russian uniform, but it's incorrect. The first few minutes of work put me in a state of mild euphoria. As I had previously worked with cheap acrylics, they didn't look very high quality. Ops, back on track please. So, after the first few minutes of working with the acrylic, I realized that this paint dry quickly, and I don't need to constantly use hair dryer for drying my model. After applying the base color, I added a bit of dictan to Soviet uniform color and started applying the light color to the protruding metallic parts to achieve a weathered paint effect, and of course to add volume to the model. This color did an excellent job. I also used it to create a gradient on the track body. Then I needed to slightly dilute the shadow by mixing base Soviet uniform color with a drop of black. Such a gradient will nicely diversify my model. Now it's time to switch to a brush and work on painting the interior. Mixing scarlet red with Soviet uniform color. I obtained a great color for the laser seat inside the track cabin. After that, I'm making this color slightly lighter, and started adding wear to the seat to give it some variety. Next, I add a little bit warm to this color and highlighted the edge of the seat to add diversity and show volume. Using the same color and dry brushing technique, I added more wear, achieving a pretty good result. It look really cool. Now I need to fix the roof of the truck cabin, where I made the shadow to white. For this I am using the base color of Soviet World War II uniform and add a little bit dictan. After achieving a good result, it's time to focus on weathering, scratches and other damage. It's crucial to give the model the appearance of being used, as it makes the diorama more atmospheric and interesting for the viewer. The tool I am using to create chips and damage is the tool I'm using to create chips and damage is a long brush, a great option I found in the some video from another creator on YouTube. Of course, you could use a sponge to apply damage more diversely, but I wanted to work with a brush and apply as much damage as possible without affecting the central parts of the entire model. The process is quite interesting, but requires a lot of time and patience, which I don't always boast of. 
However, after some time I managed to achieve a satisfactory result. Some scratches and damage were applied inside the track cabin to diversify the dark color of the instrument panel. Once all the damage was successfully applied, it was time for rust. This model needs just a bit of rust. Of course, on the internet, including YouTube, you can find many track models that look like rusty buckets. On one hand, they look very cool, but on the other hand, my little track doesn't need that. My track model will be sufficient with just a few rust spots. Having finished it with the damage to the cabin, I shifted my focus to painting the small details. I painted the track headlight and the rear view mirrors. Once that was done, I faced the task of painting the rest of the car's body. Starting with the rust color, I painted the metal parts on the body. I believe that over the years of using this track, these metal parts should look just like that. Overall, there weren't many difficulties with painting these elements, but I felt it was worth adding a bit more rust to the entire car. It turned out I returned to painting rust on the track cabin. Then, I spent some time painting the track wheels with a mixture of black and aquamarine colors. I felt that painting the wheels in pure black wasn't the best idea. However, the combination of black and aquamarine looks pleasant and adds a bit of variety to the hard black color. When I finished with the wheels, one of the most challenging stage of painting the track began, the painting of the wooden parts. Since this was my first experience painting plastic parts to look like wood, I made many mistakes. At first, I thought I was doing everything right, but during the painting of the truck body sides, I realized it didn't look anything like wood. Let alone wizard wood I had initially planned. Not wanting to redo everything, I turned to my favorite dry brushing technique for help. Using this method, I managed to give the wooden parts of the car's body a pleasing wizard color that wouldn't seem out of place. Now only a few steps remained. Now only a few steps remained, such as painting the tarp, highlighting protruding detail with a light color, and applying decals. Of course, the final step was weathering. Unlike working with tanks, these tracks didn't require a large amount of weathering. So, after a short amount of time and complete drying of all the paint, I ended up with a model of the gas AAA truck in the 172 scale, looking like this. The assembly stage of the truck is now complete, and we smoothly transition to creating the diorama for this model. Admittedly, the assembly process didn't impress me much, and I have significant concern about the quality of this model. However, the painting stage completely redeemed this track. Now we embark on creating the diorama. As usual, I am using my favorite blue foam as the base. While I was chatting about the assembly process, I reached the point of adding balsa wood sheets to the side of the diorama. And of course, you noticed the elevated area where I am scratching rectangular shapes with a pencil. My idea was to create garages that soldier repurposed as military warehouse. I wanted to make two garages, so using my truck I marked the approximate dimension of the gates. I used thin balsa wood sheets to reinforce the structure. This way I be able to cut precisionly as much foam as needed, making the construction look neat and pleasing to the eye. To remove the excess, I as always use my tweezers. It's an excellent tool when working with foam. Of course, the black wall of the garages won't be even, but this fact doesn't bother me since my garages will have wooden gates, concealing the interior from the viewer. After removing the excess foam, I needed to create the protruding concrete columns. This time I decided not to bother with using plaster and instead create an imitation of brick column from thin balsa wood sheets. Firstly, these sheets produce an excellent brick relief. Secondly, it's much faster and saves a lot of time than I can spend on working with more serious and interesting detail. The next step involved working with thin wooden sheets, a material which I always use in my projects. 
I didn't want the space above the wooden gates to be brick, so I decided to fill these areas with an imitation of wooden planks. This wall diversifies the brick wall and complements the wooden gates nicely. However, just cutting planks and gluing them to the space above the gate would be quite a dull sight. So, I decided to damage some of the planks. I randomly inflicted damage and in the end the result was satisfactory. But before gluing these details to the garage in the diorama, I needed to make the wooden gates to see how this element would fit together. The gates are made from the same material as the planks, by gluing together the previously preparated gate components. I got a decent base for the future gates. Now I needed to create an imitation of plank by making the necessary cuts on these gates. Thanks to the fact that the planks glued to the gates held the structure together, I could easily create an imitation of plank on the gates by simply making cuts with my modeling knife. It's time for the dynamic parts of the video, that I now included in every one of my videos. Great! I really like how this garage is starting to look. Now I need to refine these elements a bit. After that, without interrupting the process, because it's very inconvenient, I glued the garage roof. I also added the brick wall pattern which is done exactly the same way as I did on the plaster blank in the previous video. So I didn't see the point in showing you the same things again. Unfortunately, at this point my memory card ran out of free space, but I was so eager to continue working on the diorama that off camera. I made this too small detail, a bucket in 172 scale and some details than I often see on fire shield. I'll show you the fire shield itself a bit later. For now I continue on making small details, creating a small pile of firewood and making two lanterns for my piece of plastic frame and thin cardboard. The result after painting seemed quite good to me, but I'll leave it to you to judge the outcome. Now comes the boring and lengthy stage that I did in almost every diorama of mine, working with my favorite texture paste, made of plaster, PVA glue and acrylic paint. First, I made the initial layer to even out the texture, create a slight relief and protect the foam from paint, since some paints can melt foam. I need the first layer to be as smooth as possible, without any relief element. The second layer, however, will be used with the addition of sand. Sand will create a pleasant and varied texture, necessary to diversify the diorama and achieve the desired matte effect. Additionally, I add some material to simulate grass into the mixture, to make the mud more diverse and interesting. This time I've gained some understanding of the technology of creating mud on a diorama, so I can explain it clearly and sequentially to you. Firstly, you need to create the necessary texture and the basic form of the rod. Always use the transparent film and try to trace the track using your model. This is a crucial point, because if the track differs, for example in width, it will look extremely strange and silly. After the main form is done, you need to let it to dry a bit. This is also an important moment. Otherwise, you might simply ruin the work you will done earlier, if your diorama doesn't dry enough. After the first layer has dried a bit, use the same paste and thick brush to carefully create elevation along the edges of the track. You can also use some hard tool to create additional tracks. This way your road will look more diverse and realistic. Then with a brush and water I gently smooth out the track so it doesn't look too rough because I needed the mud to be slightly dried. Now a wet broken rod, not completely dry but slightly dried. I hope this information is useful to you. If anything is unclear, you can always leave a comment on the video. After the diorama has dried a bit, I diluted the remaining mixture with water and applied it to all the diorama details that should look like cement parts. After drying, the result is excellent. All that's left is to add a small amount of grass and a small bush. This detail will diversify the diorama and make it less monotonous. The second reason for adding vegetation to the diorama is additional detail. 
my diorama has a lost empty space, and adding vegetation to this space will fill the void, making the diorama visually richer without overwhelming it with distracting details. And since I'll start talking about details, it's essential to add the final touch to this diorama. I'm talking about adding a pile of firewood and a small number of planks to another empty area of this diorama. As I say in every video, you need to try to make the most of the diorama space to make it interesting and look like a cutout piece of reality. It's challenging to achieve and I don't always succeed, but it's crucial to strive for it. And with time and experience, you will develop the ability to see and create additional details that will harmonize wonderfully with the entire diorama. Now all the details have found their place. It's time to move on to priming the diorama and further painting it. This time I decided to fully use Vallejo paint. And I can say it was the right decision. My previous paint were cheap and created a lot of ugly spots on the diorama, unclear highlight and unnecessary gloss. Even though this paint were matte, I fear to imagine the result if this paint were glossy. After the primer dried, I moved on to the next step, which involved painting the vegetation. The primary color for the grass was German camouflage bright green. This color is perfect for a summer landscape. This time I aimed for diversify because creating another autumn diorama will be strange and boring. After applying the base green color, I added another paint to the German braid green, which called golden yellow. Using these two colors, you can create a bright mix that will make our grass look more lively and summery. There is no need to fear that while painting the grass. The paint will cover the entire diorama because the next painting stage will start after coloring the grass. And now it's time to focus on painting the ground. Using a brown color, obtain it by mixing scarlet red and golden yellow. And I adjusted the brightness of this color by adding black. Of course, one must be careful not to accidentally paint the grass brown. But after completing all the work on painting the ground in the base color, I achieved an excellent color theme. Now I need to switch to a brush and work on the track more detail. In my recent works, I'll often use a technique where the edges of the object are highlighted with a light color. These techniques add volume and variety to the object. I find it to be a versatile technique, and using it can diversify almost any detail on the diorama. As it seems to me, the road now looks more interesting, but too bright. This issue will be addressed by applying a dark wash, which will be used at the end of the painting process. My next step is working on the vegetation. I apply a cool technique which involved highlighting the edges, as I say previous. But now I want to try use this technique on vegetation. This will make our grass voluminous, diverse and interesting for the viewer. For the fine grass, this method is even more critical, because it almost blends with the entire diorama. And the additional volume solves this problem. When the painting of the grass was completed, my attention turned to working on the diorama detail. To begin with, I decided to paint garage doors, to understand what color tone and effect this object should have. As you can see, I paint the gates in the color of old wood, with the addition of warm shades. Essentially, it's the same color as light matte, but for black gates, it's just a perfect solution. Next, I needed to apply base paint. I decided that my gates would have an army green color. But since these garages are quite old, the paint should look warm. I used the dry brushing technique and applied the green paint. In the end, I applied this color to all wooden parts of the garage. In my opinion, this color looks simply stunning. But to complete the work on paint in the wooden part of the garage, I need to highlight the edges with a light color. The result of this work is simply wonderful, and everything looks even better than I planned. But the painting of the garage doesn't end there. Now it's time to paint the bricks. The base color for the bricks is a mixture of a scarlet red and a little bit golden yellow. 
After applying the base color, I added a drop of Dictane. This is done to highlight the edges of the bricks with a light color and make the appearance to the brick more interesting. One of the last elements was the fire shield. I painted this part of the garage using the same principle as the garage gates. Only instead of green, scarlet color with a hint of black was used. I think for painting such elements I choose an excellent method. The wooden parts look fantastic and highlighting the edges with light color doesn't spoil the impression. On the contrary, by highlighting the edges with light color we get additional volume as I mentioned several times in this video. Now it's time to pay attention to various small details. Here the work involves painting the concrete parts of the garage, coloring wooden debris in the different shades, and dedicating time to paint the electrical panel, wires and street lamp. Only after this I could place the figures that I had painted before out the thin. When they adhered well enough, I applied my favorite wash. Wash is made from oil paint colored one dyke brown, which I use in every one of my work. This wash creates a beautiful shadow and always complements the diorama's overall appearance. And after drying, the diorama has numerous small but very interesting shadow. That's exactly what I need. And that's it, my friend. This is the diorama I will create at this time. I hope you didn't waste your time watching this video and learn something new or simply enjoyed the viewing. If so, please give this video a thumb up, write what you liked and didn't like about this work, and for those who want to support the develop of this channel and help me purchasing figures and models, there is a link to my Patreon in the description of this video. With that, I bid you farewell, until we meet again. Good luck, my friends!